we've got one more lightning talk for you. So uh, this last one is from a member of the community that I think a lot of people here know, uh, but some people may not. And uh, that's Vance Lucas. Vance uh, has got quite a history with Techlahoma. He uh, was one of the original founders, along with uh, Jesse Harlan and, and Amanda Harlan, a handful of people. Uh, was a Techlahoma president for a very long time, has run or helped run, pretty much put on the Thunder Plains Conference for several years. Uh, just your 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 super volunteer, so critical member of the Techlahoma community. Uh, currently is an engineering lead, engineering manager at Shopify, and uh, um, yeah, I just uh, yeah, I'm very excited for Vance's talk. Uh, he used to be of awesome mind back in the day as well. So Vance, I'm gonna uh, hand it over to you. All right, thank you. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about engineering leadership and um, how to be effective. Uh, in leading a team. Um, that could be something that you aspire to be. That could be something that you have the position of now. Um, either way, you're going to probably get some value out of this talk. Uh, I have a lot of experience. In, I've been in some kind of leadership experience probably for the past six, seven years uh, at various day jobs, various capacities, um, leading teams as a developer, uh, or more recently as an engineering manager, kind of leading on the uh, on the management side, but still active in in development. So I'm going to go over first, what is a lead developer? Uh, I think it's useful to kind of define the traits of a good lead developer first and uh, go, over, go over all that. And then some key things that um, you have to do as a lead developer, uh, some of the more key traits or, um, I don't know, the key aspects of the job or tasks of the job that you might do. So what is a lead developer? Um, the first thing is you have to have deep experience in your craft. Um, to be an effective lead for a team, uh, you just have to have a lot of a lot of knowledge, a lot of uh, pretty deep knowledge uh, about the problem space and the tools that you're using to be most effective and to, to help your team the most. So it's not something you're going to get you know, hired into right away. Um, it's not only about engineering talent, though. So you do have to have the experience, but it's kind of a hybrid role between, um, let's say, engineering is kind of a um, an independent contributor role. A, a lot of companies have these two tracks. They have like a management track and, a, and an IC track or an independent contributor track. Engineering is mostly an independent contributor track. Um, Obviously, if you're any management is like the management track, a lead developer or a lead engineer, the higher up you go in engineering, the closer to the management track you get. So you're not all the way in the manager track. You don't may not have direct reports. You may or may not. It depends on the on the org. Uh, usually not as a lead developer, but you do have leadership responsibilities and you are expected to kind of help shepherd the team along in certain things. So it's almost like a fence writing role, uh, which is why it's not for everyone. So you have to have the ability to like talk to the business, uh, separate strategy from tactics. So what does that mean? That means um, a lot of developers kind of get in the weeds of, of stuff, uh, particularly in meetings. If you've ever been in a meeting um, with a bunch of product people or a bunch of you know, marketing people or VPs or something, and then there's some developers in it, and then some developer starts talking about, you know, all these implementation details, and you're like, no, you know, <laughs> this is not the meeting for that. Um, that'd be, that. that's more tactics, like how you do something. Strategy, overall strategy is like, you need to talk to business about the overall strategy of what you're doing, why you would do it, um, things like that, rather than tactics, uh, rather than specific code tactics. Help others on the team as much as you can. Uh, you know, you're you're the lead. You need to elevate your whole team. Um, this is important. <laughs> it's the team who decides to their leader who their leader is. So, if you're aspiring to become a lead developer, I think one of the key questions to ask is. <clears throat> If the team, um, let's if you have a lead, let's say they they're they're leaving the team. They've they've accepted another job offer or they've won the lottery or something. They're going, they're leaving the company. The team needs to decide who their next like lead is, um, and they're going to hold a vote. 
right? So who are they going to vote for and why? Is that going to be you? Like, why would that be you? Why would that not be you? So um, when thinking about who is a lead developer, it's really it's really a something the team would have to kind of agree with to to put this person in some leadership position that's uh, maybe not directly over them, but at least can influence them and the team. Uh, a good lead should keep the team pointed towards the end goal. Uh, like I kind of alluded to earlier, a lot of developers have a tendency to kind of rabbit hole on issues and um, just get really excited about the specific tech problem or, or engineering code problem. And they um, have these blinders on to uh, sometimes for what the, the end goal is. So a good lead will kind of identify that, <laughs> stop the person from going too far down the rabbit hole before um, before they get into a situation where <clears throat> a bunch of throw a bunch of work has to get thrown away or something because they weren't um, they weren't headed the right direction. Um, you kind of have a knack for identifying problems before they happen, or you kind of have a sense about you know well if we put the code together this way, or we engineer the solution this way, then these are the downsides of them. So we should come up with some solution to mitigate these downsides, uh, that kind of stuff. That comes with experience a lot of times. Knack for solving problems quickly or a hunch. If you watch detective shows, you know, uh, <laughs> SVU, Law and Order, anything like that, um, these detectives have this, these knacks, these hunches, you know, these leads they follow. A, a good experienced lead developer is kind of like that. Like you'll develop this feel for what you, I don't know, what you need to pursue, what you need to look for, what you need, what you don't, that kind of stuff. Uh, bias towards action. A lot of developers, I would say probably most, will kind of, have this bias towards not doing anything until they're told to do it or assigned a task for it, a good lead developer will kind of proactively identify areas of improvement to the code base or to process or anything like that. They're kind of constantly looking for improvements to make, things to do. They'll have a bias towards action, towards improving, towards doing something, making everyone's lives better, making the product better, making the company better, something like that. And in this kind of position, if you're aspiring to be promoted into this position, it is kind of a position that you have to uh, do before you get it officially. <laughs> if you if you uh, think about your boss's shoes, like who should I make lead developer on this team? You know, this team kind of needs a lead. Who should I make a lead? Um, if you're thinking about it from that angle, like who should they promote into lead? Are they going to promote somebody who has... Um, who has shown no initiative and done nothing, you know, kind of just doing their tasks. It's great that they're doing their tasks and we need, you know, the business needs people who just do the tasks. So I'm not, so that's, that's valuable. But if you've not shown any leadership skills or any um, progression, I guess, it's very difficult to, to be in the contention for that or even in their mind for that. So um you have to start kind of acting like one before you get it. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, you know, dress for the job you want, not the job you have, just just in terms of, of actions and, and what you're doing. Um, there are differences in small companies and big companies. Small companies, I think a lead is probably going to be mostly, uh, you're going to be mostly putting in processes, like making sure they have tests, making sure relenting code, making sure that the syntax is a certain way. You're going to be looking at, a lot more uh, specific code architecture or pieces of, of, of code um, that needs to be exact ways. At big companies, um, it's a little more strategy. So it's a little more, how does this product fit into this other product we have? Um, how can we collaborate across teams? How can we um, <laughs> you know, uh, work, with, uh, work towards the organization's goal with our specific product or, or um, you know, how does this fit into the overall bigger picture, that kind of stuff. So it's going to be a lot more strategy at big companies. Good communication and feedback. So um, I'm going to go through all these here now. So um, a good lead should have uh, be basically be providing good communication and feedback to their team and to product or management higher up. In, on your team, you're going to have a lot of opportunities to do that um, through 
code review, regular code reviews, um, uh, just regular chats, emails, pair programming. If you do pair programming, um, if you're not, you probably should be, <laughs> or at least helping th uh, to at least help each other through you know difficult spots when people get stuck. Um, some leads have one-on-ones with the rest of the team. Um, it's not always. Sometimes that's just managers. So it really depends on what you want to do. But it's uh, it's good when you're a remote company to do that because you don't have that face-to-face -face time uh, that you would normally have just chatting in the office. Um, you're going to be working on prototypes with your team. You're going to be working through proposals. If, if your team wants to change something, you're going to be working on that, working with them, leading that, um, providing feedback, um, you know, the lead developer is in more communication with management and with product than um, maybe a lot of other developers on the team. So you're going to want to also, it's a two-way street. You're going to also want to provide the feedback to the team. And the reason why you're helping them with these, with these things is you kind of know uh, maybe the product team's minds a little bit better about where they are. So if you see something in the proposal that you don't think is going to help sell the, the vision or direction you want to take things, then you can you know tell the team, share that, make adjustments, that kind of thing. Um, building consensus towards change. This is maybe uh, <sighs> uh, this is maybe one of the most key things a lead can do. Um, if there are some changes that you want to make to the code or to the product, to the architecture, whatever it is, there's invariably some change that either you want to make or the team uh, or the team wants, um, you kind of have to step into the shoes of, <laughs> of a salesperson. Like, how are you going to sell this change? Uh, how are you going to make this change a reality? A lot of developers are afraid of making big changes, and that's for good reason. Um, maybe the code's not tested as well as it should be. Um, maybe someone's tried to make some changes in the past and they've gone bad and they've taken down the whole site or the app or whatever. Um, so I think a good lead is not afraid of making big changes, but also at the same time um, knows how to mitigate the risks of the change. So when you take out the fear, that means you're mitigating and addressing the risks of that change. So as long as you can mitigate the downside, you can alleviate that fear of making change. So a lead will help do that. Everyone wants things to be better. <laughs> um, a lot of developers like to complain about things. Uh, you know, this code base is terrible, or product doesn't know, or product just wants features. They don't want us to be able to fix anything, or um, they don't give us enough time to, to write proper tests and you know whatever. So everyone wants things to be better. And you probably hear that in the form of complaints a lot. Um, but relatively few people actually take the effort to push through that change. So this is really the role of a lead dev. They're going to listen to their team. They're going to listen to the complaints and things that are not ideal with the code or the product or the way it's put together or how buggy it is or whatever. Come up with a plan to address that and then present it. So... You identify a high impact area that needs improvement. Um, and this is not hard to spot, right? Most businesses know what needs improvement. They're like, you know, well, our app crashes when you when you do this, or users are complaining about X or Y, or it doesn't do Z very well, or, you know, um, we don't have any tests or, you know, something. Like, it's going to be pretty obvious uh, what needs improvement most times. Uh, so high impact, like high visibility thing that needs improvement. Um, propose a helpful change. This doesn't have to be like a, a formal, like multi-page proposal. This could be just a simple one. Use real data to back up your opinions. Um, this is like real numbers. So um, if you're proposing a change, like we should switch to, you know, this one solution because it's more performant than this other solution. You can't just say it's more performant. You need... Like, how is it more performant? You know, you need to back it up. And why? Because stakeholders will ask, why? Why are we going to switch? Why are we going to invest this time? And you don't want to look stupid proposing changes that you can't back up. So have opinions, but be able to back them up. Um, you need to show the good and the bad trade-offs. Um, when, when you're proposing changes, 
you can't just show the good side. It's kind of tempting to be like, um, you know, oh, this solution is way better um, because of all these reasons. And then that's all. You just want to show the good side to kind of help sell your, your solution more and ignore the kind of downsides. But that doesn't actually help you sell your solution. That actually sends the message that you haven't thought it all the way through. Because if, you, if you've thought it all the way through, there's more than likely some downs, downsides or at least some trade-offs. You know, like if you want to change the database schema, that means we're going to have to start writing to another database. And if we do that, that means we're going to have to have some downtime. And how long downtime is that? You know, there's all these trade-offs, right, to, to anything that you want to change. So you have to show the good and the bad to demonstrate that you've thought through the problem and thought through all the trade-offs, and that will help you sell it. So deal in act actual reality of the situation, um, that's just you know showing the very real trade-offs. Like, I want to improve this, but to improve this, it's going to require you know, a month's worth of work and X and Y and Z. Um, and then let you know present that to product or, or management and let them decide if that's something they want to do. Um, what you're wanting to do here is you're wanting to lead others to the same conclusion that you've already come to, right? So if you've thought all the way through this problem, you've kind of identified the problem areas, possible improvements you want to make, and then your job now is to lead other people to the same conclusion. So there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. Um, but uh, that's really the purpose of your proposal. Um, if you're proposing a rewrite, it always takes longer than you think. <laughs> Just, you know, 2x, 3x, um, the estimate. Um, don't throw it over the fence. So what this means is <clears throat> if you're proposing something, uh, when when you've got buy-in for your proposal, whatever you're going to change, uh, and you start having to implement it, um, there are situations in where uh, you might need to work with other teams, uh, third parties, other internal teams. Um, you need to be able to clearly communicate with them, uh, expectations, requirements. It needs to be, you know, we need this data in this format um, and we need it, you know, on this endpoint or, or whatever it is. Um, clearly communicate all that. Um, don't just file a ticket. So some, <laughs> uh, your boss is going to follow up, right? They're going to say, so is this project done? How are things going? And if you're like, well, I filed the ticket, you know, I, I went to their JIRA board and I put a ticket on there. Like, you can't just do that and assume it's going to be done. That's throwing it over the fence. I always got to follow up and ensure, and ensure it gets done. So constant communication with the other stakeholder uh, on the other team, third party, whatever it is. Um, remember, at the end of the day, you're judged on results, not effort. So if you've put a lot of effort into this, you've created a lot of tickets and whatever, but that team doesn't actually have capacity or they have different deadline or they have different priorities, um, it's not going to get done. And because you're judged on results, uh, not effort, uh, you're going to lose in the long run. Uh, there's no consolation <laughs> prize for a job almost done. Egoless empathy. I'll, I'll speed that up a little bit. I think I'm a little bit over. But um, you must maintain trust and respect of your team. If you're going to be a leader, that's, that's just bare minimum. Um, ability to separate ideas from code and ego. Um, occasionally, you're going to write bad code. Occasionally, you're going to get stuff that gets thrown away. Um, you're going to propose changes that leadership or mark, you know, or, or product doesn't agree with. Um, you're going to have to just roll with the punches. You know, you have to separate. You know, they're not pushing back on you; they're pushing back on this specific idea, and they might have specific reasons behind that. So, a lot of times, if you kind of step back and say, "Well, I'm trying to make things better for X, Y, and Z reasons." Um, that's why I proposed this. They might actually have just a different approach of doing the same thing. So be open to other opinions. Um, if you're in a lead position, you're probably right a lot on a lot of things. Um, it can be very easy to grow a big <laughs> ego, but there's also other smart people on your team at your company that are in the positions they're in for a reason. So be open to other opinions too. Yeah, don't think, take things personally. Your job as a lead is to lift the whole team. So 2x the whole team, not 10x yourself. Um, just be asking all the time, what can I do to help the team? Uh, what can I do to elevate others? Share responsibility with others. Um, don't hero code. Like there's there comes a time when you might need to like just code one thing and get it done, and that's fine. But that shouldn't be all the time. You know, you need to maybe you need to do the core of something, but then you need to step back and think, how can I break this up? How can I get others involved? How can I 
um, share responsibility with the team. And that helps elevate the teammates too, because then it's not just you doing all the cool stuff and the fun stuff and the impactful stuff. Um, I am writing a book. I'm, I've been collecting my thoughts over the past, I don't know, three, four years of uh, various lead positions I've had. I'm collecting all my thoughts into a book. It's leaddevbook.com. So check it out if you're interested in uh, that when it gets released. Thanks. Thank you very much, Vance. That was a <clears throat> that was an awesome talk. That covered a ton of bases. Um, same thing in the Twitch channel and uh, the Twitch chat. Feel free to ask any questions. I'll go ahead and comment, and uh, you'll first of all say that no matter where you are in your dev journey, whether you just started yesterday or you started <clears throat> forty years ago, there's going to be aspects of all the things that Vance just said that will apply to you in one way or another. Uh, you'll notice that like only one or two of the options actually had to do with skill. And of course, that's an incredibly talented, that, that's an incredibly important part of, of being, like, you know, being an engineering leader. But so much of it is a mentality that um, is kind of separate from the skills. A lot of times they grow in tandem, your skills get more, you get that mentality, but a lot of the times uh, they don't. And you can, under, you can have the understanding of what a leader would be without, with being new to the, being new to coding. And um and I'm just, uh, the big point there is I think there's a lot more to being a lead at a developer, a lead engineer than than just the skills. I think Vance just proved that right there. Um, so thank you uh, so much, Vance. We don't we don't have any questions right now in the Twitch, ch Twitch chat, uh, but Vance is incredibly active in Oklahoma. Uh, he's on Slack, so feel free to hit him up directly there. And you can also chat in our channel and we'll, we'll facilitate everything there.